In the past decade, I used different tools personally or at work to deploy web applications. And I remember when I just started my career, uh, the cloud was not yet popular and there was no Kubernetes. So we used tools like Ansible, Puppet and Chef to orchestrate the infrastructure, configure VMs and deploy our software. Then the cloud came and gave us a privilege to scale up or down instances in one click with its own hefty price though. Then Kubernetes became popular and that's what I've been using, at least in my last three companies. It was always Kubernetes and some sort of public cloud. And don't get me wrong, I love Kubernetes, but it's a beast, especially when deploying on your own hardware. So for some smaller projects or mid-sized projects, I used various platform as a service providers such as Fly.io, DigitalOcean, Vercel, that simplify a lot of things for developers. They also abstract a lot of things. And they strive because of that, because there are so many developers who are afraid to just use a simple Linux server. So here's what I did for my latest personal project, gitprint.me. It was a fresh Ubuntu on cheap Hessner VPS server, Docker Compose, Nginx, Let's Encrypt. Um, so did everything manually. The whole process took probably 15 minutes, but I could also run other applications on the same VPS. But it was still a bit manual. So I searched for a tool that can help me automate this deployment process um, so I can release changes easier or roll them back. Ideally, it's just a command line tool. I don't need any fancy UI. And recently I've been hearing a lot of good things about this project Kamal. Um, I believe it's from DHH and other members of Rails community and decided to give it a try and deploy my project uh, with Kamal. And so in this video, I wanted to show you how to deploy an application that consists of multiple containers to a fresh Ubuntu server with Kamal. I already have a Docker Compose configuration that can give us a clear picture of what's happening here. So I have two main applications, API, UI, and there is this accessory container, Gothenburg, that can generate PDFs for us. So this is used by the API. We can also draw a simple diagram to see how it works. So we have a user, we have our web application, which is on gitprint.me address. We have our API application that's on api.gitprint.me and we have our Gothenburg, right? So if we, the lines would go from user here, something like that, right? And just to understand, there are actually two applications. So one is web and another one would be this API that has this accessory Gothenburg. So Gothenburg itself is not exposed to the internet, just used by the API only. Let's assume that we already have a server ready with, with a fresh Ubuntu, honestly could be anything else. And that we have a DNS configured to point um, these domain names, gitprint.me and api.gitprint.me. So it's already in my case, here's my Hetzner VPS. It's one of the cheapest ones. Um, yeah, so everything is ready. In this video, I'll be focusing on Kamal version 2, which was recently released. I, however, haven't used version 1. and I know that there is a migration documentation if you want to migrate. But cool, the first thing we need to do is to install Kamal on our host machine. So not on the server. And let's do that. Cool, let's check the version 2.2.2, the same as we have documentation for. As I mentioned, we have two applications, API and UI. They all live in their separate folders and each of them has a Docker file. So in Kamal, you have to configure each application independently, though you can deploy them to the same server. Let's start with the UI. So you can go to this UI directory and type Kamal in it. So as you can see, it created us few files and folders, uh, configuration file, secrets file, and hooks folder. So let's have a look at them. So the main file that contains all the configuration is in config slash deploy.yaml. And here we have our template or some default values. So let's configure it so it works for us. 
So the name of our application could be git print web. Then we need to name the container image. Since I'm using Docker Hub, we can use it in this form, um, print web, right? The servers are where we kind of the servers where we deploy our application. So here we need to put the IP address of our Hessner instance. And we can skip this job. So these are roles. Uh, we can use them later. So uh, this IP address belongs to the web role. Now, a very important part about the proxy. So Kamal will obtain Let's Encrypt certificates for us and uh, kind of for the defined hosts. So we can do it in this section proxy. Exactly SSL true. It print dot me. Uh, very important for our application. So upport in our case is actually 3000, as we can see in Docker Compose UI. So it exposes 3000 port. So need to do this change. Otherwise, the default one is 80. And also important to to change the health um, health check. I believe it's path. So by default, it's slash up. Though I don't have this route in my application, uh, and I assume that if you hit the home page and it returns to 100, that everything is fine. So I will do just slash. Now, Kamal needs a registry. So it will push the images there and pull them from, tag them properly. Uh, you can use uh, Amazon Container Registry, Google Cloud Artifact Registry, and a few others. I'll be using Docker Hub here. So just put my username in plain text but password obviously i don't want to to commit it to the repository and that's where kamal secrets come helpful so there's this file created for you.kamal slash secrets where you can configure your uh, environment variables secrets that your application needs so uh, theoretically you can put plain text values though it's as it's written here it's not advised because uh, this file should be checked into your re repository However, there are multiple options available to us. You can load them from environment. Um, so uh, on your host, host machine, you should have this environment variables set. You could get them from the file, or you can use one of the, their providers, such as 1Password, Bitwarden, etc. So I'll be following the option one. So I have the, I have my Docker Hub password in my environment. So it will be Docker, a password I believe so that's it you see nothing is exposed and um, it's just on my host machine this environment variable is set so let's go back to the our deploy.yaml now we need to configure the builder so my Hessner machine is AMD 64 so I won't change that however if you look at our compose.yaml for for reference where's this UI right UI has build arguments so that's docker build arguments um, so these are not environment variables uh, they're not uh, um, exposed in the runtime uh, only the builder needs them so we should put them as arguments here so args i think the format is a little bit different so not env is production um this one will be different there so api need to print dot me um, so this UI application doesn't have any environment variables, um, no volumes, uh, no accessories. So we can remove the rest, probably will be needed for our API application, but I believe for UI that's enough. So remember, it Kamal also created for us the hooks uh, folder with kind of multiple hooks that it's, I think, simple bash scripts that we can, you know, extend, modify. I'll just keep the default ones, I believe. And so once everything is ready, the first command we need to run, and we need to run it only once, is Kamal setup. And so this command will SSH into our server, uh, I believe install Docker, Kamal proxy, and some other dependencies. So uh, the first time we run it, it's probably going to be a bit slow, but let's go with that. So here we can see it's installing Docker at the moment. Alright, it failed. Uh, that's just because I forgot to start the Docker daemon on the host machine. 
So let's do that. And let's run our commands tab again. And now if we change anything in our application, we don't need to run Kamal setup anymore. We can just simply run Kamal deploy, which will build the image again, you know, push it and pull it and check all the health checks. And then Kamal proxy, I believe, will switch to the healthy new version. And this command is pretty fast. So now let's go to gitprint.me and we can see that, that our UI is deployed. The it won't work because the API part is not deployed just yet. So let's do API now. Okay, so now we can go to our API directory and do Kamal init as well. As you can see, same files have been created, so let's define them. So in this case, the service name would be git print API and similar to the image git print api we are deploying it to the same server so we'll reuse our ip address here so the host of the api would be api.gitprint.me application port was 8080 in my Docker file, and again the health check should be on the path just slash. And we can use the same registry as we used before. So username and again the password is from the secret, so we'll configure it later. Same builder configuration. Now this application actually has some environment variables, so let's uncomment that and as you can see environment variables are split into the two sections so one are clear environment variables so plain text or we can use a secret from our .kml slash secret file so let's have a look at our kind of what our api needs and split them accordingly to these two sections right so we can put env definitely as clear log level debug um, and then we need I think github client ID could be plain text as well so let's move JWT secret and github client secret to the secret part um, RDP host we don't need um, So for GitHub client ID, I can just use a plain text value. It's not a secret. Then let's say root. So that will be a volume. We'll define it later. And then Gothenburg address. So we don't have it deployed yet. So we'll do it later. But yeah, here's our environment variables. And if you scroll here, there will be a section for volumes. Let's uncomment that and yeah, use root data. So let's do it read write because my application needs to write into these volumes as well. Um, and where are our accessories? So, accessories in Kamal, it's something that your application needs um, to work, right? It could be a database, Redis, as explained here. My specific application needs a tool called uh, Gothenburg. Uh, they are not deployed or redeployed when you deploy your servers. There is a separate command for that. So yeah, let's uh, define our Gothenburg here. So call it Gothenburg image. I believe it's Gothenburg slash Gothenburg 8. Now you can set the server IP address directly here, or you can reference the roles section so where to deploy them so it's it's web role from here so it will tell to deploy to the same server now for port 
Um, it was 3000, 3000 for Gothenburg. There are no environment variables, um, no files, no directories as I believe. Now to access our accessory from our API container, we can use this format, which is a service name, dash accessory name. So git print dash API dash Gothenburg and port 3000. So I believe everything is ready here. We just need to set the secrets. We go to Kamal secrets file and do similar. So again, we'll use environment variables here. Docker hub password. And we also need GWT, GWT secret, which is also in my environment on my host machine. So I prefixed it with GT secret and the same would be for github client secret and now let's run Kamal setup which will be a bit faster this time because it doesn't need to install the docker and Kamal proxy so just what the application needs so now it's building the go application okay it's ready so I believe that it deployed our API as well as Gothenburg accessory for accessory, we can check it with the following command. I believe it's Kamal accessory details, and then the name of accessory. So, Gothenburg. Yep, it's up and running. Again, we can just do Kamal deploy in the future when, when we change our Go backend. So, to build it again and deploy. Now we can go to api.gitprint.me. Um, yeah, and it says healthy. Okay, now let's verify that everything works well together. So API plus UI. So for that, I can just sign in with GitHub. That would already indicate that it works. And yeah, we can just click something again just to see if it actually does. So this one, for example, will call the Gothenburg. So yeah, everything works well. That's it. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, we didn't have to SSH to our servers manually. Kamal did everything for us. Um, and now we can use these imperative commands such as Kamal deploy, Kamal rollback to manage our deployment. All in all, I like Kamal project. I like its imperative approach. I'm not sure quite yet if I will be confident enough to put any critical applications to production using Kamal, but surely it, it works well for less critical ones. And while exploring this topic, I also found a few other similar open source solutions for self-hosting, such as Coolify.io, Docploy, Sidekick Deploy. So yeah, um, go and check them out, uh, have a look at Kamal, play with it, and let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks, see you later.